I said, now just a minute. Uh, if we have fuel in town at 289 or whatever it is right now, and we have a 42 cent state tax that we put on, add 42 cents to $2.36, you know, we're still less than gasoline is right now. But I think what we're thinking is we can do that better than that because we don't have the transportation costs of the beadstock or of the, the ethanol. So my next step in this analysis was to find out, well, if we did, I have a little scenario here, if we do it in our model thing, you know, we get, you know, at, uh, 729,800 in the local economy. Then I jumped and I said, well, if we take this 10.5 million we're send, sending away and we use the, the uh, metrics that this, these people do the, this kind of study, and these are links, you can see what the guy said. I was amazed to find that that's like $28.5 million would be increased in this valley. You know, that's, I, I, I was just floored by these numbers, and I, I think they're, they're within 20% accuracy, probably. It is, it is not that. So then I said, you know, why are Sam and other towns not doing this? You know, why are we the only ones that thought of this? Uh, it turns out some other people have thought about it, but they're not getting very far with it either. And I, I think that the business of community, of the community business in this country is part of that reason. So I'm answering this question, you know, why isn't anybody doing that? And I'm saying, well, it's, they're really showing us bigger issue, and that is the concentration of wealth at the top, and uh, nobody getting anything at the bottom. And that's when I, I stumbled into, let me take it just to this next thing, where it's well documented by now that the productivity of workers has been increasing as it was before 1970, but their wages haven't changed, but their productivity has been increasing. That's just another aspect of what happened to the financial markets, where the money got concentrated at the top. And what I'm saying is, it didn't work you know, for the Romans. It didn't work in Greece either. It's not going to work in China. They're doing the same thing. They're concentrating wealth in the top half a percent or so. India's doing the same thing. I think that the United States is smart enough to not keep doing this. There's a guy, Sonny Kapoor, who used to work for Lehman Brothers and some other people. He has now created an international think tank, and he points out that we can't get anywhere without exchanging money. We can't get anywhere without the banks. We just need to do it right. So here I'm pointing out that other industry failures and, you know, Chuck's not giving me too much of an argument. He knows a lot more about engines than I do. But I'm saying these flex fuel engines that are coming out made in this country aren't any different. You know, so they do get lousy mileage compared to gasoline. But then I point out that, you know, why didn't Saab have this trouble? Two years ago, in 2007, they have an engine that, that runs just as far as a gasoline engine does on pure ethanol. When this country... And Congress, I'm thinking, had a role in this. When the oil company said, the Congress said, let's make E85 because we need to start these cars in cold weather. That was a complete misunderstanding by all, everybody in Congress, as far as I could tell, and everybody, including me, at that time. But I've looked at it since. What Saab did is they put a heater downstream of the fuel injectors. Now their car starts in cold weather. You know, so the, the, the point of all this is, I've, I've seen these, these problems created by government and by industry. Industry, the financial markets, the concentrating the money at the top of the companies, that's why this is, this is true. And so I'm saying those are the problems, uh, but the solutions are for this town and 10,000 others like it to be competitive, make our own transportation fuel and put the money back into the community. The, the, the things it does when you look at the information on this, uh, like in this town, it used to have uh, logging, used to have mining, 
you know, the people, I lived here 15 years ago when there was a sawmill downtown. You know, I used to go to the Salmon River Inn, you know, for a beer and dancing, and none of that happens anymore, but I think that's changed in times, but the people were thinking differently. You know, they had a law of sawmill right here in town. Now, the town blamed government, you know, for... <laughs> Our mayor thinks that uh, because they listed the salmon is why they can't cut trees anymore. So I'm suggesting our local government isn't very helpful in, in solving this problem. Of 8,000 people in this valley, there's four of us, maybe five now, uh, who realize that we can solve our own problem. If we can make our own fuel, we solve the job problem. There's 138 more jobs would be here if we did this. Uh, we solve the carbon dioxide problem because we're just staying neutral. We're not adding to it. Uh, the economy problem is solved. Uh, we don't have to buy gasoline at any price. We buy it at whatever we can make it for. And the numbers we show we can make it for probably around two bucks. We think at first we need to put it into E10 because that's everywhere. Now, in my data, I don't have the drying of the ethanol because it forms an azeotrope at 95%. But as I point out, you know, the reason for this, there's no reason to put ethanol in gasoline in the first place, but we know we need to follow that at the moment. But we think, and Willie picked up on this too, that if we can get started and show this this is feasible and that ordinary people did it, and if Chuck can just modify the engine on those bikes over there and have them run on ethanol, you know, because they're fuel injected too. There is a technical thing if Charlie can do what Saab did, <laughs> you know, we think the solutions are here in this town and other towns when you put it all together and see that we can make our own transportation fuel. When we started on this, I just looked around and I said, well, what will grow here? Well, sugar beets turned out to be what that was. And there's all this media that says, well, you can't do it. Well, I...